Hello, and a very warm welcome back to your sixth, seventh, or eighth favorite reality TV recap podcast. It's Blighty Day Fiance. Today I'm joined by my man Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and alternate Thursdays. It's Elliot Wilson. Hello, hello. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the only reality TV recap podcast, uh, because it's the only one that I listen to, (laughs) apart from the others that that you and and the the gentlemen do. So, uh, you're number one. (laughs) You don't listen to the other ones, but that's totally fine. You, You promote them, which is more than enough for me. Oh, I see you have your play pretend wine. I do indeed, although supplies are, are running low. I seem to be buying out West London of, of play pretend wine um, as Sainsbury's appear to have stopped stocking it and, uh, and others too. So if there are any suppliers out there who wish to sponsor me in kind with uh, fake dealcoholized grape juice style wine, then I'm all in the market. Just Just go get some, you know, very inconspicuously get some Manischewitz and you can put yourself in a diabetic coma. Yeah, but it, it's 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 even mankier than this. <laughs> no offense to the big man. <laughs> no offense to Manischewitz. Ah, oh. all right. Um, my name is Michelle. I think I've already said that we have had a couple of weeks off for which we do apologize. We're very grateful to you for your patience. Um. Various things have happened. I hate vague booking and uh, as they call it, and I hate not being able to talk about it. But um, as I said in the episode that I just recorded with my husband, Robin of 90 Day OG, sometimes there are things that go on that impact more than than just the two of us. And so it wouldn't be appropriate or prudent for me to to discuss that but everyone is fine everyone is safe and healthy and um if you are one of the many who sent me a message of support thank you so much and i'm sorry that i haven't yet gotten back to everybody individually but uh we are very very lucky to have you and i'm just i'm sincerely humbled by um, how much you care because I'm just a ding dong, you know, Um, I am an overeducated, underemployed dummy. Well, I I take exception to the last part, although the, the beginning parts are interesting given that I've just been writing about Anne Boleyn, so there we go. Overeducated and underemployed, <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> oh my god. Hashtag justice for Ant I mean, how sorry y'all, we need to get into we need to have like history nerd corner. What a is there a more basic take in the entire world than Oh, Anne Boleyn was done wrong? No, I, I don't think there is. Um, I mean, undoubtedly she was, but you know, a lot of people were in those days, and a lot of them were married to Henry VIII. Um, my my point, and I shall be publishing an essay on this probably later today, is that essentially we see her for some reason as a morality tale. I don't know why we've picked on her to see as a morality tale, and because we see her as a morality tale, we have to make her this icon of virtue and learning and and proto-feminism and all of this kind of stuff. And most of it is either not true or difficult to support. And it, it covers up the fact that, yes, it, she had a tragic end at a young age. That That's very bad. But, you know, it wasn't unusual for the 16th century. And I, I don't really understand why we've become fixated on her. But, you know, what do I know? Hashtag be more Berlin, as I believe they say. <laughs> my, my problem with things like that is... I am all for uh, a feminist re... uh, I don't want to say rewriting because that suggests that, 
you know, there's some work of fiction involved, but I, I'm all for any perspective on historical events that isn't necessarily the most popular. And I think that those are very valuable um, and needed urgently. And I am very much looking forward to spending the holidays buried in Philippa Gregory's latest um, book about, I think it's called like Normal Women or something like that. Um, But it's interesting that the people we are so desperate as a society to, as you say, kind of turn into feminist icons also happen to that that what goes hand in hand in that is making is making somebody the perfect victim like you say right which is in and of itself one of the most misogynistic tropes there there is right so why are we doing that it places a burden on on somebody's historical legacy that they can't possibly uh, support um, through no fault of their own. I mean, you know, she's a woman who died either in her 30s or her 20s. We're not quite sure when she was born. Um, died after a very short trial, though, you know, one which was done according to contemporary pre- procedure properly. Um, I mean, obviously, she wasn't going to be found innocent, but, you know, th- those were the times. Um, but we're asking history to, to say that she was this, this great... Uh, uh, not only proto-feminist, but this this enormous, uh, influential intellect who who, sky, who sort of blazed her way through the Tudor court and and changed everything. And it, it just the evidence just isn't there. Um, but you know, it, it's it's a shame. I mean, there is there is a slightly macabre sort of ending to that, which it came up in in part of my doctoral studies um, when later on, when Henry's married to Jane Seymour, uh, she's pleading with the king to save a, a monastery in 1536-37 and he turns to her in the council and says that uh, she should remember what happened to his last wife who tried to give him political advice. Nice. Yeah, it, it's a good one to throw at your, your wife, isn't it? Oh yeah, your, your predecessor, I cut her head off, so mind how you go. Yeah, for me that's too high a risk for the for the reward. I I wouldn't have made it very long in uh in court life, I don't think. Despite being what I think I can confidently say is I I think I'm like a uh a, a 16th century 7 out of 10, you know? Oh, at least. Um at least I've got all my teeth. Yeah. Uh, zero syphilis. I'm I'm proud to say. You Good know? for you. Good for you. Uh, no fleas. Have survived one out of one of the plagues that I've lived through. Um, you know, and uh, am still alive. Well into my although. I have yet to bear a child. I'm well into my childbearing years. Still alive. Tudor Tinder would be lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be because I married a Jew. <laughs> Which would have... Well, you'd have had trouble finding one in England in 1535. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have had to go further afield. And it would have been worth it because he is my everything. Aw. Um, I can't say that on my wedding day I said anything near. I'm so happy because here there's no divorce because it's illegal and now he can't ever leave me. Which is uh, what Mary said of Brandan. Yeah, that that's a big statement, isn't it? The um, the whole he can never leave me uh, is it's the kind of thing you say to parents who are dead and in your attic, um, you know now they're mine forever that kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's it, it, it ominous. I'd say. Do you think Lolo 
now I understand it. It is likely that he would have had to work and wouldn't have been given the time off. Um, why do I get the feeling that he might not have gone also because he's the laughing stock of the village? There is a there is a strong possibility of that. I mean, I, you know, I I like weddings. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, I've oh, I've, as do I. I've I've long thought that given I have my own morning dress, I should hire myself out as a, an extra guest for people who are running low. Um, but I, I would have gone to that wedding just for the. Well, I mean, where do you start from? The, from the costumes downwards, um, to to the sense of will the relationship last beyond the ceremony, which is always a nice little free song at weddings. Um, and and if so, how bad is the car crash going to be? That's true. Um, I noted that she also brought up how often they fight in their wedding vows, which um, again is not something that I would necessarily raise in front of the the congregation on the day but you know what she's got her own style um and as we've established she is uh the queen of this particular village um how did you feel about brandan's mom angela uh giving him sort of what i felt was now I want to be completely fair to her because I celebrate that she supports her son and that she managed to not make this about her and that and I think she went a long way towards repairing her relationship with him. She seemed to have stayed sober. Um I'm cautiously optimistic about all of that and I think that's wonderful. However, I think she's missed something here in her uh, you're going to have to be a man speech, which is that to me, it's very obvious that when Brandan was living in America and had a shitty life, Mary and the thought of being with Mary was his sort of buffer from reality, right? And he's been through some pretty awful things um, with his mother, with uh, experiencing homelessness, um, having been, you know, the child of parents who were either, I can't remember whether they were ever married, but, you know, divorced. There's all this trauma and he's and now that he's got his horrible life from which there's no escape in the Philippines, he's kind of replaced Mary with video games. So Angela, knowing what she does about addiction, how can to me, I'm thinking, how can you not see that this is this is what he does to cope? I'm not saying he needs to do it all the time but it's not about playing video games it's about a lot more than that yeah it, it's, it's interesting isn't it? i mean <laughs> you know it doesn't i would certainly feel a little bit offended not that i was replaced by anything because we all go through that in relationships but to be replaced by video games is a bit hurtful i suppose i'd want to know what games they were um you know if it, if it was very old school pong or something then i really would feel a bit aggrieved um, no, I, Angela's very interesting because she she veers between two sorts of person, neither of which I'm condemning or, or, or lauding, and neither of which I'm sure I know which I am. And the first is that, you know, you with your nearest and dearest, whether it be, you know, children or, or siblings or whatever, you support them no matter what, you tell them everything's going to be fine because that's what they need to hear, and, you know, you are there as an, an absolute infallible backstop. And, and that has a lot to recommend it, and... A lot of people do that. The other sort of person, and I think this has, has equal or at least some measure of, of mitigation, is that you don't tell somebody that um, that Shinola that shit is Shinola, or or vice versa. That if something is clearly, you know, less than ideal, 
there's no point in telling them that it is ideal, and you may as well be honest with them, because if you're not going to be honest with them, who is? And I have sympathy for both of those those schools of thought, and I'm I'm really not sure which Angela is, or maybe she's she's both. But she she clearly doesn't sugarcoat things, um, and you know I think perhaps Brandan is is the sort of person who maybe needs that because I think he's a tendency to to run away and think that everything will be okay. Um, yeah, and... exactly. I I really appreciate that she that she's managed to get her sometimes warranted, sometimes not criticisms in, but she's, again, she's taken herself out of the sort of drama triangle and actually managed to put him first, which I was really impressed by. It doesn't change that this is still one of the darkest stories ever told, on this show, and I, I believe that Mary is uh, at best mentally ill, and at worst um, maybe a sociopath. And that's not a word that I throw around lightly. Interestingly enough, if those were scarab beetles, um, those are actually good luck. I, I looked it up. Symbolically, scarab beetles represent um, renewal and rebirth, and they're uh, a positive symbol. Now, a plague of scarab beetles... I, I don't know what the... What, what is the, the collective... I mean, I know what the collective noun is for <laughs> for beetles, but, you know, you'd say like a plague of locusts, right? Yes, I mean plague does does sort of have connotations, doesn't it? <laughs> this is something that's been yeah. sent by somebody, and maybe it has. Um, I mean, I, I think if I were treated to beetles in that number, then I would see renewal as the ideal renewal being them not being there anymore. Yeah, I would see the rebirth as um, you know a natural consequence of all of them being wiped out at once. But it certainly was a strong message from from oh, yeah. the gods. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, whatever that might be, it it was loud, um, and you know, this is probably not not to dark everyone out too much, but this is probably the last good day they'll ever have. You know, because I I don't think it gets better from here. I really don't. This this is certainly one of those tales, and I think we we used the analogy in in a previous uh, format. I think I mean this is German fairy tale level of dark, isn't it? You know, the, the, no good will come of this. <laughs> um, it's it's going to get worse. It's going to get weirder, and you know, before you know where you are, there's a gingerbread house and somebody's eating your legs. But you know, shit happens. Talking of which. Um... It's so weird seeing Danielle actually dressed as an elf because, um, and again, I know that you've largely been pro Danielle, um, and I understand why, um, because you haven't had the shared experience, uh, that the rest of the audience have of, of several years of watching her essentially treat this man um, like he's not an equal. Um, I mean, I think we've definitely touched on before that there are expectations in a relationship like this and that it would be foolish to pretend otherwise, and, and yet she does. Oh, I totally um, get that. Yes, yeah. That, yeah, that's quite I. Obvious. But God, I mean, I have to say, and and I'm sure I'll get a lot of heat for this. I, I feel for her in this moment. I I've never been in a relationship like this before. I've never been in a relationship where, 
um, either person had the attitude that either person does. So, um, but in terms of having that level of kind of what feels like an immediate threat of violence, right? Like you and I have both been there, not together, but (laughs) separately. And you know, (laughs) you know how scary that is. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's unpredictability, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's, um, if you're, if you're in a relationship of, of any kind, it needn't necessarily be a romantic one, but if you're in a relationship between two people and you genuinely can't tell what the other person is going to do, that's very, very unsettling. Uh, even more unsettling if, of course, they're, they're dressed as Santa Claus. Um, but, uh, I mean, the... Yeah, the, the thing about Johan is that... And I accept absolutely that I, I've come into their tale, their story, their 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 drama, um, their journey at a particular time, is that he's been given a series of gift horses and he's not just looked them in the mouth, but he's actually punched them in the mouth and laid them out cold, one after another, and completely obliterated a considerable amount of moral high ground that he might well have had. Um, and it's, it's extraordinary to watch, really, to see somebody who consistently, wittingly or unwittingly, I, I suppose unwittingly, just manages to undermine his own position every time by making a bad situation so, so much worse. It, it, I mean, it's impressive work in, it, from a sort of narrative point of view, but one does wonder. I well again I think he learned I think he learned this from her. Um I think that these are two people for whom and I as I have said many a time I am not a burn the witch bitch. When I like someone I like them and when I don't like them I'm always open to the possibility that I will like them. So there's always room in my heart. You know what I mean? Even for someone like Danielle. And what I will say for Danielle is that I disagree entirely with her attitude toward this relationship, with her attitude toward this man, with her um, American exceptionalism, with her uh, idea, I I think that she gets there eventually, though, is the thing. I think that she sticks to her guns and has these very wrong, <laughs> however you look at it, from whichever angle, just absolutely incorrect views on things. And eventually she will get there because she does, you know, she, we see in the preview for next week. She says, I think that the man that I thought I saw was never actually in front of me. And that and that's it, you know, No shit, Sherlock. Yeah, right. It's it is interesting. It's I mean, I have to say I'm, I'm partly I, I was partly set against him a couple of episodes ago. Um, by it was particularly the phraseology he used when he started saying, "Oh, you know, you, you can't steal from your wife," and I just have a real trigger warning about people who start saying what you technically legally cannot do to or from your wife, because I think that's a a road down which uh, there is there is no salvation um, and no goodness, um, and I think that that sort of pricked my ears up and not in a good way um but it, it is a it's a dysfunctional relationship because actually i was going to say it's a dysfunctional relationship because they're they're expecting def- different things i think they're expecting different things because it's a dysfunctional relationship or i don't know but they you know you can there is a horrible inevitability to it at times you can see it unfolding and you think yeah, I could have written this a week ago, and yet here it is. And yet there are still some extra tweaks of gruesomeness that I did not see coming. So so well done, Danielle and Johan. Right, and I think part of that is because as much as she... As much as Danielle kind of t- 
talks herself up and uh, behaves in a way or carries herself in such a way that suggests uh, that gives an air of authority or 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 knowledge or she is so vulnerable and she is so scared and she fears rejection so much and i'm i'm really starting to see what we haven't seen for so many years which is the the sort of like that tender underbelly of what this is all really about, which is that, you know, she wanted to be with someone who she could have enough control over um, that she couldn't get hurt. And, and there just isn't, I mean, I guess... <laughs> I guess if you have enough of what the other person is looking for, you you maybe could have a relationship like that and have it be successful. But it's a tr that's a transactional relationship. That's not that's not a love relationship. And transactional relationships are fine, and I think they probably work out better than most romantic relationships do. You know, I'm not putting that down at all, but I think I think they are both um, I don't think either of them have listened to a single word the other one has said ever, ever, ever. It, and I think true, they've, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's extraordinary the way there's been not very much sort of character arc development <laughs> as her. I mean, you know, they they are they are who they are, and and what seemed like warning signs at the point at which I came in are now, you know wide open either wounds or or you know gaps between them and and you think oh yeah so it was it was what i thought yeah that's a that's about right um and i was i mean nobody should ever threaten to take anyone's dog or cat or anything like that that was totally unacceptable that upset me deeply um and i hope and pray that that dog is safe and in a happier healthier environment um yes i confess i thought of you at that point I, I know yeah i bet you did <laughs> so just a brief little ray of sunshine here um speaking of dogs uh trigger warning pet loss Sadly, Kenny on Armando's Chihuahua Toffee has passed away. This didn't happen on the show. Um, this happened now in in real time. Um, so our deepest condolences to them for their loss. And uh, thoughts are are with their family because that is that's devastating. Um, so for background, when Kenny moved, he had an ancient Chihuahua called Truffles, um, and Truffles passed and, uh, Toffee and Mika, who is a Frenchie, came onto the scene. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, we're, th we're thinking of you, Kenny and Armando and, and sending love, um, I thought this was interesting. I, I've never, I've never quite, I want to understand, <laughs> I want to understand why Armando got a bed and Kenny got basically a, like, uh, a toilet, right? <laughs> You know, sometimes them's the breaks. Uh, I mean, life, life isn't always fair. Um, I've I've woken up some mornings in my younger days and thought this was not where I expected to be waking up this morning. Um, but uh, you know, but uh, couples do things in different ways. I'm 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 not here to judge. I mean, I am obviously here to judge, but I'm, I'm keeping it quiet. Um, but yeah, it was peculiar, wasn't it? 
um, distinctly. I, I, I would say. Yeah, I just thought it was unfair because, like, I don't know if it was a, I don't know if the standard deal is, you know, you get a bathroom stall with a TV. I, I mean, I've sat in airplane seats that are bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, I've. I, I was reflecting actually. I was going through my my camera phone reel, um, and uh, I, I found a photograph I'd taken of probably the smallest hotel room I'd ever slept in, about oh four years ago, around the beginning of no three years ago, beginning of the pandemic, I think. And it had clearly been a cupboard um, at one point, uh, <laughs> and it was uh, it just had the width for a maybe a queen size bed but literally no space down the sides of of the bed um where were you uh, i was in clapham of all places so you know leafy south london um oh how in, funny in a, yeah it, it was during a very strange peregrinatory week or so um uh, when i was uh, how should i put this between accommodation so i was going from Airbnb to to hotel to whatever uh, on a, a sort of nightly or bi-nightly basis no not bi-nightly Two nightly basis, um, bi nightly would be weird, um, and yeah, I, I found this place in in, in desperation at, at somewhat of the last minute, and it was literally you know it it was a bed sized aperture uh, into which one flung oneself uh, with a comedically small sink. I'll send you the picture. I took a photograph of the sink with my hand next to it for scale, and notwithstanding the fact that I have relatively large hands, it, it's it's a small sink. Well, we're definitely going to post that somewhere um, so our listeners can see. And let us know if you've, uh, what's the smallest room you've ever stayed in, listeners? If you have a picture of it, that's even better. If you have a drawing of it, that's the best. And was it designed, or at least was it purportedly (laughs) a room in which you were supposed to sleep? Or masturbate into a cup. (laughs) Yep. Or both. You know, we've we've all had we've all had heavy nights. Um, so one more sort of heavy hitter couple before before we go back to the hammam, um, with our favorites Shekinah and Sarper, Wayne and Holly. Oh dear. Yeah. So I believe it that Wayne is never home. I do not believe that Wayne is always at work. I don't believe that for a second. That's interesting. I I never until this very moment entertained the idea that he had either the wit or the imagination to be doing anything else. Maybe that's harsh of me. Well, I don't think you need wit or imagination to, like stand outside a 7-Eleven and drink, you know? I suppose so, yeah, yeah. Do you think it's Although as basic not... as that? you think he's just sort of avoiding home and... I think he's avoiding home, yeah. I think when he comes home, there are... I mean, listen to his own words. Holly's bitching and moaning... I now that's not to say that she isn't okay and he can feel however he can feel and I I I accept that in different places in the world there are different ideas about what a what a spouse's role is right but the way that he was talking to his dad and this whole conversation with his dad just made me feel like he married her expecting that she would just that she would just be around and not have her own life and not want to have her own life and that he could be out at work fine which i accept but i i think he's thinking of kind of what to us is a somewhat antiquated model, which is, you know, go to work, go to the pub until like 10 and then come home, go to sleep. Right. Yeah. There's, there's an element of, of his approach to it, which 
suggests that he thinks she's a bit like you know the toys in the playroom that when he's not there she's just asleep and 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 not moving um no <laughs> that may well be i don't know um but in, in fairness that's probably there's probably an element of truth to that <laughs> there may well be but it's it it's a kind of it's a non-malign solipsism that he has i don't think he's a bad person um but i, I think, think he's he, a bad person really uh, yeah I'm, I'm trying to be kind because i i I don't know why, actually. It's not like me at all. Um, but I, I just feel that he has this sort of... This insularity about him, this sort of ability to grasp his own selfness, his own quiddity. But beyond that, really not very much is is happening there. No, um, and I'll confess that he put me off right from the beginning because he referred to black South Africans as squatters. Um, Interesting take. Yeah, which is just not, which is wrong for so many reasons. And and that kind of told me who he was and... Look, even even apart from that, even if I were to put that aside, which I can't, um, I do think that he loves her. I do think that he is telling the truth and that he means it when he says... My understanding of, of of what he says is I never would have entered into this if I knew that our lives were going to be so hard, you know, which is saying, which is acknowledging that she's in pain and it's not working for her. But because she is 12 years old, you know, all she hears is, I don't know, I don't like you anymore. I just, I have so, I mean... I'm no great fan of his, but I have so little patience for her. I can't, st- I can't abide the constantly like running away and living in a hoodie. And, you know, I'm, I get that she has probably been through unspeakable types of trauma given her hair situation and her affect and her baby voice and uh, inability to be alone and insecure attachment, enmeshment with her mother and all of those many varied ways, the mermaid tale, etc. That was very strange. That was very, very strange, I thought. But But that's a perfect metaphor for their relationship is I got this mermaid tale for the pool that you haven't filled. I, that's, that is, that is perfect in, in so many ways. Um, on every level of metaphor. I mean, I, I have a slight, I have a very basic and logical issue with the whole mermaid idea. Um, and, and, you know, without wishing to be too crude, where, where does the woman start and the fish end? Because I think this is quite important. If this is going to be a lust object, that's see where an I'm excellent going with question. This one. Uh, yeah, fish tacos. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I uh, guess it anyone... that you'd, you'd want it to be fish bottom half and not top half. I get that. <laughs> because the other way around would be literally monstrous, but. It's, um, yeah. Well, speaking of uh, hybrid creatures um, whose parts are not real. uh, Excellent, thank thank you. Over to the hammam. Now, again, we're we're sort of, and Robin, (laughs) I'm using this phrase for the second time, and Robin corrected my pronunciation. And ironically, I was talking about how you drop Latin into everyday conversation. Like, you text 
in Latin, which I deeply appreciate because it's helped me so much with, um, with law. And I still, I, I am one of those assholes who thinks everyone needs to learn Latin because it is really fucking useful. Okay. Um, we are still with them at the Hammam and, and Medius race. In media rays, I suppose. Yes, yeah. And media rays, yes, yeah. Yep. It, yeah, um, there. Hmm. I'll, I'll put they're... it out there. I don't think Sarp and Shekina have particularly good Latin. <laughs> uh, I don't think they have a use for it beyond uh, what can be texted. You know, beyond the uh, the literal. Uh, As I demonstrate fonts. every day, you can you can text Latin. I mean, admittedly, yeah. oh. Sarpa, Sarpa does live in the, the former last capital of the Roman Empire, I grant you. So, you know, maybe he could nod to his heritage. Well, not his heritage, but the, the heritage there. But I, I just don't... I don't see them as big classical people, really. No, I don't. Um, what do you make of this child discussion? Because it kind of came out of nowhere it did didn't it um you know they they, they'd sort of been pootling along quite nicely if by quite nicely you mean in a an ongoing car wreck which one couldn't stop looking at um (laughs) and and yet uh, yeah suddenly there's this there's this not just this sort of minor issue but this massive rending potentially fatal impediment to their relationship which is that he wants a child and and she doesn't they both have children though he has a a secret child that he didn't tell his parents about and doesn't see i think um i i don't know if he didn't tell his parents about but he doesn't know the whereabouts of of this child or indeed the child's mother i, I don't want to be harsh um, but if i was the child i'd be keeping it that way um yeah me too i don't but you know this is a hell of a way to to find someone it, it is um, it is but you know what, it, it's difficult because i think whether or not you want to have children is the most potentially the most difficult part the most difficult obstacle to a relationship because there's virtually no way to compromise if you both have very strong feelings if one of you has very strong feelings and the other one thinks my preference would be x or y but taking everything in the round you know um, uh, Keteris Paribus, as they say, then I'll, you know, I'll go for it. <laughs> but, but if you if you have two people who are absolutely at opposite poles, there's th- th- there is no there's no middle ground. I mean, unless they get a dog, I suppose. But I wouldn't trust either of them with a dog. No, no, me neither. But look, she's, I, I totally get it. I completely support where she's coming from she has a child she doesn't want to repeat the experience of um parenting alone which she would be i think also now i'm not entirely clear on whether her ex, who is, tw- I think, 25 years her senior, whether the father of her child is an ex-husband or um, an ex-boyfriend, if it's an ex-husband, I wonder if there's alimony happening that would stop should she remarry, right? That's I mean, that's possible, one yeah. thing to consider. because, And she might be fine with that. But when you factor in another child and then she's, I mean, and then she's single parenting on whatever Sarper's salary is, like, no, no. Well, I mean, the idea of being financially dependent on Sarper is, uh, is, is just horrific beyond words. No. And I, I have, um, I think at least one male cast member on this show, a uh, previous male cast member on the show from a pre- previous season, um, was a male escort. I don't think Sarper is. 
purely based on what we've seen of his his stripping um we've established this body count is is false it's it's a lie i don't know what it's for i don't understand it on that topic he says that <laughs> He says that Shekinah has to be flexible because he's bent so much. Um, and for him to for him to kind of put uh you know not having sex like eight times a day or whatever it was that he claimed to be doing and uh what is medically deemed a geriatric pregnancy that is the term for it um which it would be for shekinah uh bearing that child and raising that child um i'm i think that's one of the more outrageous arguments that has ever come up in the history of this show it, it's quite dizzying isn't it because you know he's he's essentially stopped having imaginary sex with fake women uh, which is nice. Um, you know, I've, I've never seen a man who I suspect lives sexually by the motto gone in 60 seconds. It, it's very, very odd. Um, but <laughs> he, you know, he's that's what he's given up. And he's he kind of stopped taking on female clients, but didn't really stop. Um, so he still does that. And... He right. he bought a new bed because the other one was probably becoming sentient. Um, I think she. I think she bought him that bed. Very possibly. Well, he 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 assented to receive and use another bed um, because of the 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 grim kind of uh, physical and spiritual persona that his old bed was starting to achieve, um, but. Yeah, that that seems to be it. She's come to live with him in Turkey. Turkey's a lovely place. Um, I, I like Istanbul a great deal. Um, lots to recommend that. But she's left her family and child. Let's not, you know, forget. And mm-hmm. he's done. Oh, he he kind of posted on social media eventually after basically being beaten with sticks until he did it. So that's yes. what he's that's what he's given to the relationship that that's not that's not an equation which i could balance even with my poor limited mathematics no that is not that's not bending that is barely a head nod compared to what having a child would mean and i and i think fortunately for her and i don't know that it'll last but this seems to have kind of broken the spell a little bit um and all of the silly back and forth, and they're still doing their internet speak at each other, you know, like, I am going to delete you. You know, it will take me two days to forget you. That I believe. Um, I believe that too. I'd, I'd say two days is pushing it. I think he probably yeah. operates on a kind of 20 second rule. Um I don't think they even speak to each other when the cameras aren't on. Oh, well, why I think would they're you? just I mean, on, they're just on their phones. Yeah. I um, am unsubscribing from this conversation. Yeah, she's I mean she has a little bit more about her than than he does, but Yeah. We're not talking very much. We're not talking no. very much. I mean, we're talking, you know, the shared, you know, brain cell for the for the day. Are you excited for next week when Kimberly, who Robin and I have always said has a touch of Linda Blair about her, she goes does. full on? Yeah, that that is going to be very exciting. Um, I mean, I think we could. <laughs> I mean that that could be sort of challenging on a whole number of levels. Um, Never mind the Pope's exorcist or whatever. I think this could be where it's at. I, I love Kimberly. Um, I think she's great TV. And the reason is because there are so 
few people who, particularly these days and particularly of that generation, who are actually unable to kind of put on a mask or a persona for the camera. I think she is exactly who we see each week, although regrettably not this week. I think that's right. Um, and it's why she can be occasionally very, very endearing and and you can feel very warm towards her. And then, you know, she can turn on, on a sixpence and you can think, oh my God, why why is she being like that? Why is she doing that? I think it's just completely unfiltered, un, unchecked, untrammeled Kimberly-ness um, yeah. spilling out. And uh, there is something admirable about, about that, uh, about somebody who either cannot or will not rein in their, their natural self and just thinks, well, there you go. I think it's a bit of both. And I'm not sure that it's... That it's uh, in service to her highest self um, that she keeps that unchecked. But, um, and they are a very sweet couple, so it's going to be sad when it all falls apart. Um, there are three of them in that marriage. Oof, right? Um, thank you so much, Elliot, for joining me thank you all for joining us we have missed doing this terribly don't miss our coverage of uh the ryan murphy's series uh feud the swans coming in early 2023 i think we still don't have a premiere date but elliot and i will be covering that we would be covering the gilded age but somebody refuses to pay for it so no, um, I, 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 I'll happily pay for it. I've, I think I've got the first one. <laughs> Assuming you're meaning me. Yes, of course. We can do that. What was it that I got? Re- okay, let us know if you want us to do the Gilded Age. I think we sort of have to. I'm, I've, I'm rewatching season one with Robin. Um, anyway, um, if if I have time, we might do that. I know it's not quite. Uh, um, you know, it's not an Anglo-American thing, really. Uh, but neither is the swans. It's just a topic that we're really passionate about. So there, mon frere. Um, what we won't be covering, though, I'm afraid to say, is the crown, because uh, it kind of got terrible reviews. And I'm not sure that any of us who lived through that time in history are particularly keen to relive it. I certainly don't want to relive it badly. Um, I mean, I, I, right. remember, I remember it well enough and, and through the lens of my own uh, disasters and mistakes. So the idea of it being filtered through someone else's is not particularly attractive. It does seem to have jumped the shark, and it's very interesting because... You know, if you think back it's to the first couple of seasons, shame. it was it was lauded as this amazing. It was piece outstanding. Of it now, really was. And now you've got you know, ghosts and and um, and and poor Elizabeth Debicki, whom I adore, uh, in a, a, a terrible sort of faux Diana wig, trying to to put a brave face on it. And I just think it's it's very unfortunate. She is marvelous, though. I mean, she really. She was the, and, and you know, I, I mean, all of the actors who have been on that show are, are superb, you know, top of the line. Imelda Staunton, Jonathan Price, Dominic West, like, there's not a, there's not a bad one among them. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't. And to call it a car crash it seems in very poor taste. But there there you go, and here we are. Um, tell them where to find you, Elliot, with your beautiful, voluminous curls. Uh, well, I, with or without them, I can be found on Twitter at uh, Elliot Wilson 2 E-L-I-O-T-W-I-L-S-O-N-2. Uh, and from there you will find uh, a, a gateway to, to everything I do. 
uh, in a rather terrifying literal sense, I suspect. Um, so do pop along. Uh, I, I published a, an essay about JFK today, because today, when we're recording, although I don't know when this will be broadcast, is the 60th anniversary of the assassination of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Um, so I put some thoughts up on there, and as I said earlier, there will be a piece on Anne Boleyn and why we all need to just get a grip uh, coming soon enough to sit alongside all of the, the usual political commentary. Which is why we're so lucky to have you down in the locust plague <laughs> when you're writing about major historical events. I think this is, uh, this is an elevation out of the, the dust of the arena at times. At times, but I still think, I still believe with all my heart that this show and this entire franchise is about two things. One, the dismantling of the patriarchy, and two, the decline of American exceptionalism, both of which I think are, you know germane to lots of serious political conversation but you came here hopefully to get away from that thank you for spending the last hour with us everyone we absolutely adore you thank you so much for your support if you want to hear this ad free and you want to hear the archives um and sister wives and plathville which i cover with the beautiful and amazing Amanda Lipnack Raydell. Uh, head on over to patreon.com slash blighty day. Blighty is spelled B L I G H T Y blighty day on Instagram. I am very rarely on Twitter, but every now and then I check the, the old DMS there. Join our Facebook group, blighty day bays. Bays is spelled B A E S. We hope to see you there. Thanks a million for listening. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you next time. See you soon. (laughs) 